Hello children, how are you? All having relaxed time at home, having online classes and keeping you busy. Well, that's good, isn't it? Now, you are busy and having a constructive time at home and quality time with your parents. Isn't that wonderful? All right. Uh, now, today, I had given the name of the story, but I could not kind of get more details about that story. So, I changed it over to The Little Dutch Boy. It's a tale of perseverance and this has been um, adapted to its present form that I'm going to read to you by Sarah Toast. Hmm. So let's begin. This is about a boy who lived in Holland, right? And long ago, there was a boy named Hans who lived with his mother in a pretty town in Holland. It looked like this. Okay. The land of Holland is very flat and much of it is below the level of the sea. The farmers were built there, built big walls, these big walls called dikes to keep the sea from flooding their farms. Hans and the other children knew that if a dike or the wall broke, the fields and the towns would be ruined. One day, Hans' mother packed a basket of fruit, bread and cheese for Hans to take to the old friend, Mr. Van Norton. Mr. Van Norton lived outside of the town and it was a long way to his house. As Hans set out, his mother told him not to stay too late. She wanted him to be home before dark. Here we can see the mother giving the food basket for the old gentleman. What a kind-hearted lady and what a brave little boy Hans was of doing this for his mother and going all the way to the gentleman's house outside the town. Mr. Van Norton had only an old dog to keep him company, so he was very happy when Hans came to visit him. So we should all take care of our grandparents and elderly uncles and aunts since they can't move about that actively. So it would be nice if they have company, isn't it? To get to Mr. Van Norton's home, Hans just followed the main road out of town. The road ran right alongside the dike. Hans was very thirsty and hungry after his long walk. So Mr. Van Norton made cocoa and set out the bread and cheese for him. After their meal, the boy and the old man talked by the fire. Hans enjoyed Mr. Van Norton's stories of the olden days. Like, there you are. That's Mr. Van Norton and the table on he has laid out cocoa and cheese and bread and Hans and he ha they both have a smile because they're giving joy to each other. When Mr. Van Norton's dog scratched at the door to be let out, Hans noticed that the sky had become dark and stormy. He decided that he should leave right away to get home before it started to rain. Hans said goodbye to Mr. Van Norton and promised to be back soon. Hans walked quickly, but he was not even halfway home when the air became much colder and the wind began to blow. <whistles> Very hard. It wasn't long before 
cold, stinging, raindrops, bitter patter, battered hands as he struggled against the powerful wind. The weather made it difficult for Hans to walk. But he kept going. If I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, said Hans to himself, I'll be home soon. The strong wind made the trees bend low. And it flattened the flowers. Hans was getting cold and he had to hold his hat on his head to keep it from blowing away. I hope my mother isn't upset when I arrive home so cold and wet, he thought. Hans was getting more and more tired with every step, but he had to keep going. He remembered that his mother wanted him before dark and Hans did not want his mother to let her down. He wanted to go and get home so she would not have to worry. There we see Hans struggling against the rain, the storm, the raindrops, the blowing, cutting cold winds. You could see him holding his hat down on his head. Hans kept his head down against the wind as he trudged along the road. It was so dark outside that Hans had no idea. He was nearing the town until he lifted his head. For a moment, Hans was happy to see the dike right in front of him. It meant he would soon be home and out of the rain. Even with all the raindrops falling and dripping from the trees, Hans noticed some water where it shouldn't have been. There was a small hole in the dike in the wall and a trickle of water was seeping through. See, that's the wall, that's the dike and he gets this, through the storm and rain, he gets to see the hole and the water of the sea trickling down. Oh my God. And <clears throat> Hans knew right away what must have happened. The storm had whipped up the waves of the sea on the other side and the great weight of the pounding water had made a crack in the dike. I've got to warn everybody that the dike has sprung a leak, thought Hans. Hmm. Hans ran into town. The dike is breaking, he shouted. Help, help, we've got to fix the dike. Shout as he would. No one heard Dan, Hans. Nobody else was outside. In all the houses had been completely shut because of the storm. Yes, you are right. All the doors were secured tightly and bolted. Every window closed and shuttered. And he's running and shouting for help. What a brave and bright little boy he is and an obedient one. Hans soon realized his shouting wasn't doing any good. He stopped running to catch his breath, <sighs> leaning against a fence. Hans trying to think of what he should do next. Hmm. He, Hans knew his mother must be worried about him. <gasps> But he also knew that the tiny hole in the dike was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Every minute, if the hole got big enough, the sea would surely push its way through and break the dike. If the dike broke, all would be lost. The sea would flood the farms and wash away the pretty little town. How sad! Okay, as far as he could, Hans ran back to the place where he had seen the water seeping through the dike. Sure enough, 
the crack was bigger now than when he had first spotted it. Hans knew that the crack must be fixed soon. Otherwise, the sea would break through and it would be too late. There was nothing else to do. So Hans balled up his fist, balled up his fist and pushed it into the hole to stop the little stream of water. Hans was proud and happy that once Hans was proud and happy that one small boy could hold back the sea. He was sure that his worried mother would soon set people to look for him. But minutes turned into hours as Hans patiently stood there. You can see him with his hand holding the water from gushing in through the hole which was getting bigger and bigger. As darkness fell, Hans became very cold and tired and his arm began to ache. He had to force himself to keep standing on his tired legs. To keep himself going, he kept thinking about how important it was to hold back the water of the sea. As Hans stood in the cold rain by the dike, he thought about the warmth of the fireplace at home. Then he thought about how it good it was going to feel to lie down in his snug bed. These thoughts helped the exhausted boy get through the long night. When Hans didn't come home that evening, his mother began to worry. Even while the rain was falling, she kept looking. She kept looking out of the door or the window for Hans to come back. At last, she decided, then Hans must have waited out the storm at Mr. Van Norton's. She thought he must have spent the night there because it was too dark to come home after the storm. After looking out the door one more time, like that, see how worried she is and she's looking out of the window, the gentle lady. She closed up the house and went to bed, but she couldn't sleep. She was too worried about her little boy. So let's see what's happening with Hans. Early the next morning, Mr. Van Norton was walking to Hans' home. He wanted to thank Hans for the visit and thank his mother for the tasty food. When he came to where Hans was, the boy was uh, trembling with cold. Hans' arm hurt from the effort of keeping his fist in the hole of the dike and his legs were ready to collapse from standing all night. Still Hans had to hold firm for just a little while longer. Mr. Van Norton ran into town to get help. Don't worry, Hans said, Mr. Van Norton, I'll be back in a jiffy. You're doing a great job. Longer. Soon, Mr. Van returned with someone to take care of Hans and materials to repair the dike. See, we can see him helping and talking to Hans. See, what goes around comes around. When you do a great act of kindness, it comes around. <clears throat> Hans was wrapped in blankets and carried home. He was put to bed and given warm broth to drink. His mother rubbed his fingers and his stiff legs. Word quickly spread through the town of how Hans had held back the sea all by himself. What a brave, courageous boy. The townspeople were very curious. They went to the dike to see the hole for themselves that Hans had bravely kept 
plucked. As soon as Hans felt strong enough, he and his mother went back to the dike to see the repairs that were being made. Everyone in town was overjoyed to see Hans. They thanked him for holding back the mighty sea and for saving them from what would otherwise have been a terrible, terrible flood. The mayor of the town presented Hans with a medal to honor his dedication. He deserved it, don't you agree? And all the townspeople cheered loudly, Ha! Ah, hooray, Hans! Hooray! Hans would forever after be remembered as a hero. Years later, even after Hans was all grown up, people still called him the little boy with a big heart, a big fist and big courage. And see, they are so happy and he is receiving his accolades and that's what his medal looked like. Hmm, don't you think so he deserved it? Well, I hope you all enjoyed the story. It was lovely to see your eager, shiny exp expressions on your faces. Love you all and be good to your parents and whoever is living with you. See you soon. Bye-bye.